The kamikaze drones, Shahed, and their Russian analogues, Geran, which the Russian Federation launches every night at Ukraine, have ceased to be a threat. The Ukrainian armed forces have successfully learned to eliminate them. The Russian Z channel, call sign Osetin, wrote about this. The Ukrainian defense forces have found effective methods of combating Russian Shaheds, due to which these kamikaze drones have lost their effectiveness. Almost 100% of these UAVs are shot down or suppressed by electronic warfare. Despite this ineffectiveness, the Russians continue to actively use them every night. I can't understand how we lose 50 to 60 Shaheds in the skies over Ukraine every day and only 2 to 3 reach the target. Perhaps this is the plan. Perhaps we are identifying air defense positions. But then, why aren't missile strikes carried out after that? By launching 50 to 60 every night and losing almost all of them, we won't be able to inflict much damage on the Ukrainian armed forces. If you count how many Shaheds, geraniums, we've lost in the last few months. It's a decent amount, complained the Russian Z channel. It should be noted that Shahed is an Iranian-made kamikaze drone. Russia began using them against Ukraine in September 2022 to terrorize civilians with strikes. At first, the Russians used Iranian UAVs, but soon they were able to establish large-scale production of these drones on their territory. The Russian armed forces are purchasing large batches of these drones for aggression against Ukraine. The exact cost of the geranium kamikaze drone is a commercial secret. According to various estimates by experts and the media, the cost of one such drone can range from 20,000 to 50,000 US dollars. Every night, the Russian armed forces launch dozens of these UAVs at Ukraine. Military technologists of the occupying state of the Russian Federation have managed to modernize unmanned aerial vehicles of the Shahed 136 type as a result of which the drones have now become faster and are capable of gaining more impressive speed, the American Institute for the Study of War reports, citing its own sources in the armed forces of Ukraine. Thus, ISW analysts cite data from a Ukrainian military man working in a mobile air defense unit of the Ukrainian armed forces, who, in turn, note that earlier in the first years of the war, Iranian-made Shaheds were extremely slow. In addition, although these UAVs carried an impressive ammo pack, they were difficult to maneuver and flew only at relatively low altitudes. Now the situation has changed and the Ukrainian defense forces also need to improve their means of combating new types of drones. The Ukrainian armed forces military noted that Ukrainian mobile fire teams have also improved their equipment and combat tactics to continue shooting down Shaheds. The Institute for the Study of War noted. On the battlefield in Ukraine, the Russian army lost an average of 1,271 people killed and wounded every day in September, a senior NATO official said at a briefing in Brussels on the sidelines of a meeting of defense ministers. This is the highest number since the beginning of the full-scale Russian invasion of Ukraine. In May, NATO cited the figure of 1,000 killed and wounded in this regard. The official also stressed that according to the alliance's forecasts, such losses on the Russian side will continue until the end of 2024. He linked the increase in Russian losses to the fact that fierce battles are now taking place not only in the Kharkiv region but also in the Kursk region and that military actions have intensified along the entire front line. Russia continues to make small but steady tactical advances in eastern Ukraine, the alliance says, and this trend will continue in the coming months. At the same time, recruitment in Russia is proceeding at the same rate, about 30,000 people per month, the officials specified, as a result of which Russian troops are still managing to replenish human resources, but for a major breakthrough, they would need a new wave of mobilization. The Russian Armed Forces' yearly staffing plan for contract servicemen has been fulfilled by 78% by mid-October, Russian Security Council Deputy Chairman Dmitry Medvedev said, calling this rate rather good. We will continue our work on the staffing of the armed forces with contract servicemen. By mid-October of this year, the set yearly goal has been fulfilled by 78%. Overall, this rate is rather good, Medvedev said. He called to prevent delays and other staffing problems. Medvedev disclosed that he visited a recruitment station in the Yaroslavl region together with employees of the Russian Prosecutor's Office and the Federal Security Service. Compared to the previous year, the situation looks much better now. No systematic violations in the accounting of servicemen has been found, but individual problems are still there. We will talk about them, of course. We will definitely need to work to eliminate all problems, the official said. Earlier in July, Medvedev said that 190,000 people signed up for the contract service in the Russian Armed Forces in the first six months of 2024.
At the military base in Saratov, the Russian troops began training on North Korean self-propelled artillery systems. Atesh Guerrilla Movement reports, according to the agent, Russian artillerymen have begun training on North Korean self-propelled artillery systems at the recently reopened Higher Artillery Command School in Saratov. This demonstrates that Russia cannot independently produce and repair its own heavy weapons in the required quantities, as well as the growing role of North Korea in Russia's war against Ukraine, the guerrillas stressed. Vladimir Putin's request for military assistance from Kim Jong-un in September 2023 was intercepted as a sign of Russian weakness. A year and a half after the invasion of Ukraine, the Russian leader was meeting the North Korean dictator at a cosmodrome in the Russian Far East to exchange favors. What seemed like a desperate measure, turning to one of the poorest and most isolated countries on the planet, was also logical. Pyongyang's huge Soviet-era arsenals could feed the Russian military machine. A year has passed since the North Korean ammunition shipment reported by Western intelligence services and Kim's regime is now essential to the Kremlin's war. In addition, Moscow and Pyongyang have sealed an alliance that includes a pact on mutual defense in case of aggression. Kim's contribution to the holy war against the West, as the North Korean leader called the invasion of Ukraine, is crucial above all because of the 122mm ammunition he has supplied for Russian howitzers. The Times reported citing intelligence sources within NATO member states that half of the shells fired by Russian artillery are of North Korean origin. The British newspaper specified that Pyongyang had supplied 3 million shells, fewer than the 5 million South Korea had estimated its northern enemy had transferred to Moscow. The Ukrainian government says the quality of this ammunition, which has been in storage for decades, is poor and often fails. Multiple Ukrainian drone attacks between September and October against Russian weapons depots have also decimated the invaders' artillery strength. Ukrainian Deputy Defense Minister Ivan Avriliuk said that if at the beginning of the year the superiority of Russian artillery was 8 to 1 today, it would be only 3 to 1. Ukrainian Prime Minister Denis Shmihal said that same day that Ukrainian ammunition production had tripled and now accounted for half of that used by the armed forces.